Hey everyone, on Friday, I mentioned I'll be doing a round of Ask Me Anything and requested for questions in the comment section. I received quite a few, and in this video, I'll be answering your questions. Obviously, there were a few repetitions, and I've combined them into one single question when appropriate. I've categorized the questions into five. About me questions, general questions, technical questions, questions about the channel content, and finally, a few questions about AI. Let's start with about me. Right, first question, how old are you? I am 30 years old. Where do you live? I live in a city called Bengaluru, which is in the southern part of India. What's your qualification? I've done my bachelor's in computer science. Do you have a full-time job? I do have a full-time job, and I'm currently working at a company called Builder.io, which is a drag-and-drop headless CMS. We integrate with React, Vue, Svelte, Next.js, and a lot more, so come check us out if you want to build your website by just dragging and dropping components. All right, moving on to the general questions. The first one is how to learn new tools or languages. The way I learn something new is always from the documentation. I find it difficult to believe someone can do a better job than the official docs, so docs are my first preference. Once I've finished reading the docs, I try to find conference talks and blog posts on the topics that I feel are not covered in depth in the documentation. This has worked out for me most of the times, and I recommend you try that approach. All right, next question. How did you get into the field of web development? So here is a fun fact. The reason I started this channel was because my first job was not as a web developer. I really wanted to pursue web development and I felt having a YouTube channel with tutorials would be a good thing to have in my resume. That paid off and I was able to transition into a web developer role after about 1.5 years of being an ERP developer. Next question, how do you manage to learn so fast and explain in such a way? Now this is a question that summarizes a few other variants as well about how I learn different technologies and how I'm able to teach it the way I teach it. So here's the thing. It might seem like I learned something in a short span of time, but the reality is that I typically take one to two months to learn something new myself. Now, if you consider that as a short duration of time, I will attribute it to the experience I've had. I have been working on different web technologies for quite a while now, and it does get easier to pick up new flavors of JavaScript frameworks. As far as how I teach is concerned, I always ask myself one question. If someone else was explaining the concept to me, how would I like that concept to be explained? With that thought always in my mind, I try to ensure even beginners are always able to understand the concepts I'm teaching. How to master one technology as a beginner and stick to it? I would say teach it back. The only way I've found to improve my expertise in a technology is by teaching it back. Start your own blog and write down your understanding of a particular topic. You will be surprised to learn how much you don't know. Next question. There is no job out there what to do in these situations. Unfortunately, I am not best placed to advise you regarding this. The only thing I can say is keep studying every day and keep building every day so that when an opportunity does come up, you are prepared for it. What is your take on whether one should go beyond front-end and become full-stack dev, or we should try mastering front-end to go up the ladder? So my opinion, and let me repeat, my opinion is that one should start with an 80-20 split. Be strong with one, then average at both. Is it late for studying code at 30 years old? I don't think it's ever too late to start coding, and the Free Code Camp community is a really good example where people have switched to coding even in their 40s or 50s. 
I would recommend you follow Free Code Camp for more advice on this. How is your interview experience with companies, specifically data structures and algorithms? Now, some have been great and some not so good. Funnily enough, the unpleasant experiences I have had have been data structure and algorithms round where the interviewer copy pastes a question into the editor and watches you without trying to help. For me, I have really enjoyed interviews where I've had to pair program with the interviewer. It's nice when the interviewer wants to understand how much I know and not show off how much they know. How many years have you been working actively and have you ever been sacked from a job? Now I'm closing in on nine years of working and thankfully I've not been fired from a job. All right, let's move on to a few technical questions. Should a beginner still start learning with React or Next.js? I would say React 100%. What is better to spend my time studying Node.js or .NET for backend development? Well, it depends. Do you like JavaScript? Do you work on the front end? Does your job require Node.js? In all such cases, pick Node.js. If you have a C-sharp background coming from college, or if your work requires .NET, go with .NET. Completely dependent on your situation. Is it necessary to learn TypeScript right now? Again, 100% yes. Almost every company now has TypeScript as part of the stack, so it would be wise to learn it now. You might have also noticed a few series on this channel where I do incorporate TypeScript if the amount of TypeScript is minimal. If the amount of TypeScript and the code is so complex that it hinders understanding the library or technology itself, then I hold off on using TypeScript. But yes, you should definitely start learning TypeScript in 2023. Which programming language do you use most often? JavaScript. I started out as a .NET developer, but I've been working with JavaScript for about seven years now. All right, for the fourth section, it's time for channel content. When are you planning a course on Express? Initially, the plan was to create one in the second half of the year, but that might slightly be delayed due to other content. Do you plan on making a new course on Angular? Not in 2023, maybe in 2024, when signals and all the new things are more stable. Will you create a new React course? Yes. I heard your comments on the other video on react.dev launch, and I have decided to create a brand new React series on the channel. It is going to take quite a bit of time, as I want it to be the best series you can find for the next five years. It is not planned for the near future, as there are still concepts in React 18 that are yet to be stable. React server components being one such example. It's such a core feature that I cannot create a series till I understand everything there is to it. Will you make an updated Next.js 13 course with app directory? Now this was by far the most asked question and is the most asked question across the channel in the past one to two months. The answer is yes. I will create a brand new next year series from scratch. Again, there are a lot of features that are still in beta, so please wait. Good news though, Vercel ship week is through the first week of May, so keep an eye out for that. Finally, can we expect a Tailwind CSS tutorial from you? The answer is yes, but not in the near future. Okay, for our last section, a few questions on AI. How to best prepare for changes in the dev work environment that are coming with the development of AI? I would say embrace the change as much as you can. I've been using all the AI tools whenever I can, and it's always helped me save time. What is your opinion on AI and the future of software development? Again, like it or not, AI is going to play a major role in software development. It's good to start learning a few things as early as possible. 
What do you think? Will AI replace the junior level front-end developers? No. AI will actually help junior developers accelerate their career. There are so many AI tools like Copilot and ChatGPT, which can help you in your day-to-day -day job that if you ignore them, you will fall behind. Now here is the best part. I have started working on beginner level AI content and you can expect AI tutorials with JavaScript and the front-end world on this channel very, very soon. With that, we come to the end of this AMA session. I would have never dreamt I would be reaching the 500k subscribers milestone, but here we are. Thank you so much for your constant support and I hope I can produce more content that you can benefit from. Please make sure to leave a like and comment on the videos you enjoy watching as it helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you in the next one.